Okay, section 2.3 here is a fairly short section. This is all about what to do when you see fractions or decimals in an equation. So the good thing is that we don't need to convert them. We don't need to do funky things. What we can do is we can clear them away. Come on. So the way we go about clearing fractions out of an equation when it looks like this, on the, oh, I'm using the eraser again, like this number one over here, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the fractions by using the common denominator, the least common denominator of all the fractions. So I have sixths, I have fourths, and I have thirds. The common denominator is something I can uh, multiply each of them by and get to, it's a multiple of each. So like, in this case, it would be 12, okay? And what I'm gonna do, and actually I'm gonna do this one bigger on another slide just because it would be easier to see. So let's see what the problem is. Five, six X, oh, I have it right here. Five, six X minus three fourths equals one third. I want you to really be able to see what happens. So the least common denominator here is 12. So what I'm gonna go through is I'm gonna multiply everything, every item in here by 12. But what I'm really doing, and if we think of 12 as a fraction, it's 12 over one. So I'm gonna multiply each one by 12 over one. And then I'm gonna simplify using my algebra skills. So when I see something that looks like this, and I'm multiplying, what I can do is I can cross cancel. So I can cross out the 12, there's two left because six goes into 12 once, and then two times five is 10. So that's what's gonna happen here. Six goes into 12 once, or sorry, not once, twice, Oish. Two times five, that's what's left over, so I get 10x. And then I do the same thing with the next fraction. Four goes into 12 three times, Three times three is nine. And I do the same thing with the last one. Three goes into 12 four times, four times one is four. Here's the thing. You cannot just do this for the things that have fractions. When you clear fractions out of an equation this way, you have to multiply every single item in the fraction by that denominator, even if it wasn't a fraction to start. But once you do, you end up with what I have here, which is a really straightforward equation, right? So now I can go to solving the way I already know how. I'm gonna add nine to both sides. So I'm gonna get 10x equals 13, divide by 10, divide by 10, x equals 13 over 10. I'm gonna leave it alone because I don't hate fractions, we're friends with them. But you can then go put that back in your equation and check it if you want. Do what you need to do. So then let's do the same thing with the next one. What's the common denominator for the second one? Well, the denominators I have are five, two, and 10. The least common denominator here is gonna be 10. So I'm gonna go through and multiply everything by 10 over one. And it's gonna look a little smaller here. So then five goes into 10 twice. I'm left with a two and a two. Two times two is four y. Let's do the next one. Two goes into 10 five times. So it's plus five times one is five equals, and there is a negative there in front of the seven tenths. I'm gonna keep that. 10 goes into 10 once, so it's just cancel, equals seven or negative seven. And now I can just solve because the fractions are cleared away and I don't need to be stressed out anymore. Four y equals negative 12. Divide by four, y equals negative three. And you can check these. So here's the process written out. This first step is to simplify both sides of the equations. You clear out the parentheses, and this is the process for solving equations, just sort of with this additional step. These are the same steps as before. It's just that this new one here, consider clearing out fractions, is new. Everything else here is the same as we did in the last section. Clear out the parentheses, consider clearing away fractions and decimals. I'll show you decimals in a second. Combine like terms, use addition and subtraction 
to collect variables on one side and constants on the other. Constants are just numbers. Use the multiplication or division property to make the coefficient of the variable equal to one. You're just dividing by whatever it's multiplied by. And then check your answer. So take a moment and you try these. I'm going to stop talking for about a second and then we'll continue on. All right. So you paused, you tried them, right? What's the least common denominator here? LCD for this first one is 30. Six, three, five. Okay, so I am gonna multiply every single thing in this, um, in this set of stuff by 30 over one. So 30 over one times 30 over 1 times 30 over 1, including that 1, even though it's not a fraction, I still have to, what I do to 1, I have to do to everything else. It's like a holiday. If you give one kid a present for Christmas, you have to give everybody else one. It's just rude otherwise. And then I'm going to start to cancel. Well, 6 goes into 35 times 5 times 1 is 5, and the x is there, so 5x. 3 goes into 30 10 times, 10 times 2 is 20, minus 20 equals 5 goes into 30 6 times, 6 times 1 is 6, 6x, minus 1 times 30 is 30. Nothing to cancel there. And that's the equation to solve, and now we're right back to where we were before. So I can add 20 to both sides, so I get 5x equals 6x minus 10. I can subtract the 6x. So I get negative 1x equals negative 10. I can multiply, I can divide by negative 1, and I get x equals positive 10. Go back and check, make sure it works. Try the second one. What's the common denominator for the second one? You want to use the smallest thing possible. I mean, you could pick 40, but I'm going to pick 20. So the uh, least common denominator here is 20, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Multiply everything by 20 over 1. All the parts. And it looks messy. That's because I'm trying to jam it all into this little tiny space so I can show you. You can make yourself more space. And then we're going to cancel. So 5 goes into 20 four times. 4 times 2 is 8x. 2 goes into 20 10 times. So minus 10 times 1 is just 10. Equals 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 7 is 35. And then 10 goes into 20 twice. 2 times 3 is 6, so plus 6x. And we're back to something relatively straightforward. So I'm going to move the 6x to the other side. I'm totally going to run out of space here. I'm going to scroll a little bit. So I get 2x minus 10 equals 35. I'm going to add the 10. I get 2x equals 45. Um, and I can divide by 2. x is 45 over 2. It's done. Go through and check. All right, so this is how we clear out fractions. When you see a whole bunch of fractions, just remember you don't have to keep them. You can get rid of them. It's okay. The same thing happens in a case like this. We're just going to do one of these, and then I'll give you the answer to the second one. This is the same idea. It's just that I have to distribute the fractions first. I have to clear the parentheses before I start clearing things away. So I get one third x plus we're just multiplying numerators, 7 over 3, minus half x, minus half, equals 4. And now it's like, oh, lots of fractions, gross. So I'm going to clear everything away with the least common denominator. In this case, it's 6 over 1. So oh, I probably should have done that a little differently. Got my parentheses in the wrong place. So multiply it by 6 over 1 times 6 over 1, times 6 over 1, and 6 over 1, I should start writing bigger, times 6 over 1, and then start to cancel. 
So three goes into six twice, two times one is two x. Three goes into six twice, plus seven times two is 14, e minus. Two goes into six three times, minus three x. Two goes into six three times, minus three. Remember this negative gets distributed with the half. So a negative a half times one is negative a half. Equals four times six is 24. All right, so then combine like terms. I can combine the x's, that makes a negative x, and the numbers, 14 minus three is plus 11, equals 24. And now it's just a one-step equation, right, basically? So I get negative x equals 13, divide them by negative one. I get x, why did I write negative x, silly x is negative 13. Okay, you should try the next one. If you happen to get stuck on it, I will tell you that the answer is z equals 7 over 3. If you get stuck on it, this is a good one to drop into the discussion for this week and ask for help, okay? The last thing here, oh, there's one more. So if there's one more type of these. I always get that wrong. And it's where you have um, an expression like x minus two above a denominator. In this case, we're not, we don't have to break it up. We can just look at the denominators five and two and choose our least common denominator as 10. And multiply that by 10 over one, and that by 10 over one, and that by 10 over one. But what happens as a result is a little different. So five goes into 10 twice. It's two times that whole expression x minus two. Okay, and then there's a, is it a minus or a plus? A minus in between. Two goes into 10 five times. Five times the whole thing on top x minus four equals two times 10 is 20. And then we have to distribute. So two times x is two x, two times negative two minus four. I'm going to distribute negative 5 here. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 4 is plus 20 equals 20. And now combine like terms. So 2x and negative 5x is negative 3x. Negative 4 and 20 is plus 16 equals 20. I'm going to subtract the 16. I get negative three x equals four. So I'm gonna divide by negative three. X is four thirds, negative four thirds, okay? Same process is gonna happen for the second one. You try the second one on your own. I will tell you that the answer is x equals one. This is another good one to drop into the discussion. If you get stuck somewhere, come in and talk to us about it. The last thing on here, is that we can also clear away decimals. So the best way to do this is think about, um, is with powers of 10. So I want to move the decimal over. So if I have 2.5, oh, I would help if I wrote 2.5, which is that first coefficient. If I had 2.5 and I would like to move the decimal to the right one place and make it 25, the way I do that is 2.5 times 10. If I had two, I had 0.25, I want to move two places, I would multiply times 100, right? And so on. So I look at this, this has one decimal place, one decimal place, one decimal place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and multiply everything here by 10. Now for me, this is not a hugely vital process. You guys have calculators. So like deal with decimals or clear them, but this can be an extra step. So 10 times 2.5 is 25, 10 times three is 30, 10 times 1.7 is 17, 10 times 6.6 .6 is just 66. And then you're gonna continue on. I'll move, let me move this stuff out of the way and I can do it over here on the side. All right, so I'm gonna combine, I'm gonna move the seven, oh, still writing with the eraser. I'm gonna move 17x over. I'm gonna get 8x plus 30 equals negative 66. 
9 is 30. I get 8x equals negative 96. Divide by 8. x is something. Um, do, 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 do. Uh oh, did I do something wrong? Nope, I didn't. Negative 12. Okay, and then you can go back and put 12 in for x and check. You can do this process of clearing decimals if it makes you feel better. And if you don't feel like you need it and you're okay with dealing with the decimals, then just deal with them. The answer for the second one is w equals negative 7. Try it on your own, and if you get stuck, bring it to the discussion, ask a question in Canvas, send a message, talk to your partner, do what you need to do. So this is the end of 2.3. Move on to doing the Alex work or on to the next section, depending on how you want to handle this. But either way, move to the next thing. Talk to you soon. If you have a question, ask.